Mark and Jada here. You are tuning into the God Bull Life Podcast, where anything goes because love covers all. God uses marriage to grow us and accomplish his will. He's got plans for your marriage too. This is Mark. And Jade. And this is the God Bull Life Podcast. Welcome back to the God Bull Life Podcast. Back with my beautiful wife. Um, what? You are two days into 31? Oh, yeah. I am. Two I days am. In. Yes. How does it feel? I feel very, like, I've already said it. This is, like, my best, well, this was my best birthday yet, like, turning 31. What? For real? Yeah. For real, for real? Like, for real, for real. Because, like, truly, like, I'm walking into 31 healed. Like. Girl, talk that I'm for real. Talk. Okay. And so, like, I talk feel that. that. Like, for real. And, yeah. So, I'm, like, just in a whole new place. So, I feel 31 it. feels great. I feel it. Like, 31 for me last year felt the same way. Like, we didn't do nothing. We were <laughs> Michael was backyard. about to be born any day. <laughs> we were literally sitting on our backyard, patio area, just playing worship music. Yep. Um, spending time with each other. Yep. Just vibing. I think I think we ordered some crab legs or something like that and I, just, yeah. <laughs> just chilled. And it was it was incredible because for me, that felt like my first birthday as a new person mm. like that was yeah. it so, yeah so all the things i used to want to do like oh let me let's take a crazy trip or right. let's go get drunk or let's yeah. like ooh, i used to throw fire last minute house birthday parties like just impromptu and we going in but like or buy myself something special or mm-hmm. all those things. But, like, last year was like, yeah, nah. I don't yeah. even have the desire. Yeah. Like, the desire is not even there. Yeah. Um, you make a good point, too. Like, we've been blessed to the point that we can literally, if we want something, we can get it. Yeah, anytime. But we no longer desire the things. Now having the power to do it. I don't really want to. Like other things are just so much better, like intangible things. Like I think the greatest gift that I received, honestly, was healing for my 31st birthday. And you can't buy me nothing better than that. Facts. Facts. I wasn't looking for nothing else Facts. at that point. Facts. Because Facts. it was just wow. like my whole life turned up. Like, talk about a night or a <laughs> trip. You know, used to do the same things like go to Miami, go to Mexico, go to wherever and like turn up. But it's like next day you got a hangover, heavy, and you just feel crappy. But then you going into it again. Okay, mimosa popping, <laughs> champagne popping first thing in the I morning. Thought you were like in the week. I thought you was like, <laughs> you're adding to it. Okay, keep going. <laughs> I thought she was like, no, but truly, you like, got that's drunk what, and that's then you go home and then listen, you're that's like, nah, we get up and do it but again. But that's what my birthdays <laughs> used to really be, though. Like, that's what the what uh, it was about, like, getting dressed, going out, and, like, just <laughs> not remembering things mm-hmm. the next day. But, like, this year was so different. Like, it was 180 different. You tried to go to Mexico. We tried. Tried hard, actually. We, did. we tried. The inner, and honestly, like, <laughs> part of me trying was like for you because I know you were normally not even realizing that this was your first birthday as the new you. Yeah. Like, you won't rest. You won't chill. It's birthday fall on a Monday. Like, mm-hmm. you're not gonna chill. And so leaving was kind of like, well, if we out the country, then she ain't got no choice. Yeah. She's going to be able to relax and reflect and just enjoy herself fully. And I wanted that badly. You wanted to do it. And I, I almost felt like there came a point to me, especially the last time, where I wanted it more than you. 
Yeah, you did. You I did. Could, I could feel it. I wanted it more than you. Mm -hmm. And in that moment, it was like, okay, you know what? We ain't talked to God about, about this. And we've been like bringing a new meaning to pray about everything. Like the Bible says, yeah. pray about everything. We really do. We pray. Can I tell them? Oh, Jesus. Can I tell them? Can I tell them? Okay, go ahead. We pray about sex. Like legit. Like we pray about sex. And when I say the first time, it was kind of like, I ain't gonna lie, I was nervous. Because I'm like, she gonna think I'm weird. Listen, because he didn't she tell me he was about to do this. Okay. I was just like, huh? Uh, okay, I'm gonna go with it because, uh, you know. But, but, yeah. It was like, incredible. And so, kept doing it. Been doing it ever since. <laughs> Not gonna stop. Because the Bible is very clear to pray about everything. Not pray about everything except sex. Oh my God. Pray about everything except the trip you should take. Pray about everything except the shoes that you buy. Pray about every. It didn't say that. And I've, I've learned in my Old Testament studies that God is very precise. He said what he means, he means what he says. If he didn't say it, don't add it. If he no. didn't add it, don't you Somebody add it. come get him, please. Somebody come so get him. So the unlock was like, for all the men out there, that want to know if it works, prayer works on everything, <laughs> okay? It works on everything. Better than cheese, because cheese goes on everything. Cheese is, I mean, cheese does cheese go goes on, on everything, but it's better than that. Salt goes on everything. Definitely salt. But it's better than that. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, um, we finally prayed about it. And in praying about it, we said, okay, God, if you... Don't want us to go to Mexico. We're going to email these folks, mm -hmm. and they won't email us back by tomorrow. Mm -hmm. If they email us back by tomorrow, we'll go. Mm -hmm. We got both taken care of, and we didn't hear anything. Mm -hmm. So then the same night, we're in the bed talking, which I felt like the whole week we really, that was the first time that week that we really got a chance to, like, actually lay down and talk to each other because every day was like something was something. going on to the end of the night and the kids and it yeah. was like for some reason Sarah with the bed chill Michael was sleeping and we got a chance to actually just like talk then God was loud and clear he said y'all have to go surf and at first I was like well that's I mean I wouldn't mind but this ain't my birthday <laughs> and so I, I don't Let's try and see what happens. Then I told you, what went through your mind when I first said it, honestly? At first, I was like, oh, yeah, like, let's go. Great. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I bet. Because I really didn't think it through, honestly. Okay, fair. Perfect. Because <laughs> once I started thinking it through, I was like, do I really want to go to San Antonio? Yeah. Do I really want to go? And quickly, God was like, yeah, you do. And then the way God works, because he just shows up in so many other things, Bo was already taken care of. The kids were already taken mm -hmm. care of. I, I set a dinner reservation for one of her favorite places. Yeah. And um, it was actually supposed to be at a later time that we wouldn't be here now. And I'm like, oh, shoot. Like, that was the one thing. Like, you like food. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my baby like my baby loves food. I do. I do. So I was like, if I there's do. one thing that I know that she's gonna wanna do is go to this restaurant. We went. Shout out Uchi Ba. If you're in Dallas, need a fire date night spot with Love some Uchi banging ba. so food good. and drinks, check out Uchi Ba. But um I go on to like change my reservation and they had one spot <laughs> for the night. I'm like, okay, bet. But it was at 10, 15. I'm like, okay. Well, what? Two nights prior, she had me get up at 10, 30 in the morning. I mean, at night to go make her some pot stickers. <laughs> so she probably wouldn't mind eating at 10, 15. <laughs> she wouldn't mind at 10, 15 
Because we usually don't do dinner that late. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got these kids. kids yeah. so, so we be like, in the bed. Hey, 7 o'clock, we at the table eating. <laughs> yes. And by 7.30, so I was brushing her teeth and going through the night routine, and she in the bed by 8. Right. Religiously. So like 10.15, right. I was kind of scared about 10.15. I called. They were like, yeah, that's all we got. And I was like, okay, God, well, I'll book it. And hopefully she, she doesn't mind. We were supposed to leave like that the next morning. Mm -hmm. Then you realize that you had work to do. Yeah. So we ended up, it's 10 o'clock, and then it's noon, and then it's 2, and then it's 4. And I'm like, yeah, I don't think we should get on the road now. It's just like, it doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. And we can go to this restaurant if you don't mind going to dinner at 10, 15. And she Which was, I was like, like, yes, yes. Because that was the thing. That was the thing that made me slightly not want to go was because I knew that we had reservations at Uchiba. And I was like, I don't want to oh, miss hold up, Uchiba. Hold up, hold up. <laughs> so you was taking your time. <laughs> Didn't matter how late it got because you, time out. You I didn't, didn't know even that know you yet. It. I was like, you didn't know yet. But that was like the thing that I had sucked up and was like, okay, I I'll get Uchiba another time. Oh, okay, That's what okay. I told myself to like okay, okay. make got it okay it, in it. my mind that God said, no, you going to San Antonio. Got it. <laughs> Not got it. you staying in Dallas just because you want to go to Uchiba. Just because you want to go to Uchiba. So the fact that like you came with that idea of like, hey, do you want to go to Uchiba tonight? I was well, like, well, well, I was like, so babe, um, I don't think we should get on the road tonight. And he was like, yeah, well, I was like, yeah, because we're not going to get there until 10, 10, 30. And it's like, why not just get up in the morning, refresh, mm -hmm. and then go? Part of that whole spill was me knowing that I'd already made these reservations. <laughs> so he was like, okay, cool. Then I was like, plus, what you buy, 10, 15? He was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we got fly, we went out to dinner. Yeah. Then we went to go serve. Yeah. Um, so what is there, I'm going to ask you this on camera. <laughs> what is the biggest lesson you learned the past year? It's all tradition. Yeah, it is. I didn't get a chance to I ask you on your birthday. <laughs> but this year is actually probably the best year yeah. to yeah. ask it. And yeah. it really means, every year counts. But yeah. like this one was definitely special. Yeah. So what is that biggest lesson you learned over the past year? That you have a choice in a real way. That you choose anxiety. I know that that sounds crazy yeah. because it used to piss me off when you said that <laughs> to me. Hold up, hold up, hold up. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> but say, there were so many times in my mind that I was like, say, yo, but I can't say it because it's going to make it a bigger fight and I'm not trying to go down that path. So I'm going to just suck it up and keep it to myself. But wow. Yeah. Yeah. It was that, a real thing. That's that, that was real. And that's incredible. Wow. I had to really understand and learn that because... I didn't realize how many choices I was making that were leaning towards negative all the time. And it was so natural to me that I didn't even understand what I was doing. I would always, you know, it's like you go from being in a peaceful state to a situation happens and then it's the end of it and you feel like crap for the way that you responded in the situation. And you're like, how do I always end up here? Yeah. How do I always end up the angry, cursing Yo, out, that's like a, going crazy person? Why do I always end up here? That's it. So that exact thing you just described, that's how porn felt to me. That's exactly the way porn felt. Like, I know the way this story ends. At this point, I know I'm not supposed to be doing it, so I just feel bad after. Right. Like, every, but for some reason, I'm choosing to go down that path yet again. So I, I feel that 1,000%. That, like, and that's what it was. So it was like, it took a very hard season, really the whole year. Some, it was multiple lessons that broke this whole thing down for me because it was deep. 
it was super deep. It was having situations with you, having situations with our family, having situations with just myself and work mm. and mm. what? Ooh. What? Holy Spirit literally said, all that was to break you. Yeah. Yeah. All those areas that like you you kept hidden, you kept in your own head, you kept yeah. like he was like, Yeah, let's let's address this. Oh yeah, let's my address gosh. this. Yeah, let's address it this. It felt like that. It felt like, okay, like what you said last night, like when you have a you take a test and you know, we'll take the test and we'll get eighty percent right. We're like, Oh, that's a great job, you know, eighty percent is good. Yeah, good. <laughs> but God comes in and says, You got 20% of them questions wrong, and I need you to get them all right. Because he's only good. So, he's only right. So we got to go through every single one of those questions that you missed. Just figure out why you missed it. Ask questions. Use your resources. Like, use the all, get it yeah. right, and then take the test again. And when you get 100%, like, that's when we then we can go. go. To the next thing? Then we can really make moves. Because... <laughs> You can't, you can't go at 90%. You Especially can't go at 80 what, what God has us doing, what our ministry is, we can't go 90%. We can't go 80%. And that's not like we're out here sprinting. That's we're moving however God wants us to move, Yeah. period. If he says yeah. sit down, then we're sitting down. If he says go, then we're going. Yeah. And I think... Now getting to the point that we we can trust ourselves that we're gonna be obedient. Yeah. Like getting out of our own heads and yeah. and like not to your point all negative all the time, but yeah. like thinking that no, like God, God is with me, so this is like very much so possible. Right. There's a there's an option. There's a good option. It's always a good it's, option. There's not and sometimes I think like the good option we think should come is like a, oh, just change the whole situation right now. Just just make it all good right now. And it's like sometimes the good option is you humbling yourself in a mm. real way mm. and and saying, you know what? I am a mess. I did treat you like terribly. And I have to recognize that part of myself and look myself in the mirror and really be ready to take that to God because he can't take it if I don't acknowledge it first. Facts. Like Facts. he can't. So you got to call it out. You have Facts. to call it out. And a lot of stuff is like <laughs> somebody mm. like me was all intertwined, all meshed together, mm. multiple things layered on top of each other because I was just, you know, trying to perfectionist my way through life. So I'ma just work my ass off. Trying to be worthy. Trying to be worthy. Trying to that be worthy. I don't have to deal with the things that are layering up and and continue to weigh on me. Cause I can carry it. Like I'm a woman, I'm strong, I'm built for this. So I can carry all the weight that's put on me, but like, no. Only for so long. You're you're not supposed to. Only for so long. That's a that lie. You ain't built for it. You ain't built for it. You can't. You can't. You can't raise your kids by yourself. It's only a you matter of time. You can't. It's only a matter of time. Listen, you you can. Say. You can. <laughs> but you don't want to. I remember getting dropped off at my grandma's house. All of us and like all my cousins now are like so close because of that. But mm -hmm. getting dropped off like back in the day, like you you know eight nine years old. It's like, all right, it's cool the first day, but I'm ready to go home. Like, grandmama mm -hmm. is out here yeah. with, the, with, the, with the fishing rods and like, nah, like, we got to go. Yeah. But, like, I understand that now, like, us dropping off the kids with my mom mm -hmm. and, like, getting a breather and, yeah. okay, wow. And needing Woosa it. And needing it. Yeah. Facts. Yeah. So it's like God put them in a position to help. Yeah. And that's, so, like, why it, yeah. get in his way? I right. can do this myself. I can Nah, like, nah. Yeah. Nah, and, nah. like, that's the thing. Some of the hardest moments for me have always been when I did not want to accept the help that was in front of me. 
Oh, shame. And I'm just fighting at something do by myself. myself. Do, I do it and myself. And like, there's help around me, but mm. I'm just so bitter or I'm so angry that I can't even allow myself to like let loose enough to like give someone else some of the weight that I'm carrying because like it's literally too much to bear. And we it, physically, it's allowing people to support you, allowing people to, you know, be involved and be invested in you and hold you accountable. Because that's the other thing I think, like, a lot of what my fear was also made up of was, what if I actually get my stuff together and then I slip and then people look at me crazy because I said and presented myself one way, but I'm actually terrible. See, but that... <laughs> Man, this might be a little bit contradictory. However, to me, that happens when it's you and not God. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, that's the difference. Yeah. So, yeah. like, yeah. climbing those ladders, doing those things on your own, well, yes, there's going to be a, a slippage because we're not perfect. Right. So like, there's right. gonna be a time where you need grace. There's right. gonna be a time. And that's where a real. You... That's a real thing. Like that's yeah. a real fear to have. Is like, if I can't keep all this up, it's gonna fail. Yes, it will. Hey, Nike started to feel like that for a while. It's like, well, shoot, I'm right. trying. I'm catching stuff over here. I got my foot up over here. Right. And I'm, like literally, <laughs> like yo. Stuff just keeps getting thrown at you. And, and then you're stuff just keeps like... getting thrown at you. You're running out of places to put okay. it. Okay. <laughs> and how can I possibly? And then you start to feel like the walls are caving in. Like, oh, my whole entire life is about is literally crumbling yeah. because I can't carry on anything else. And yeah. God wants us to give something to him, even if it's one thing at a time. It could be, he hey, wants it all. he wants it all. He wants it all. But it might take it took me giving him one thing at a time because yeah. I couldn't just give it all to him at one time. She was like, I really was. <laughs> Let me see what you do with this, God, because <laughs> I, I got a lot of other stuff back here yeah. that I don't know if you. But it's like, again, it's like when your faith begins to grow, you start to understand the magnitude of God and you start to realize, oh, my stuff ain't big for him at all. It ain't big for him. Ooh, like thinking about we're believers. Yeah, that means what's in the Bible we believe actually happened. Yeah. Like it's real. Yes. It's not like cool story, bro. Like, no, yeah. like this is legit. Yes. So God gave manna. God had Moses throw a piece of wood and dirty water to purify it. Sent all those plagues. Mm-hmm. Like, but none of them touched the Israelites. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, freaking fire. Like, he showed, people heard an audible voice of him. Like, he wrote on the tablets, wrote on the tablets. So, if God opened up the ground and swallowed <laughs> people whole, birthed a man without touching his clothes, birthed him to death without touching his clothes, like, these things happened. Mm-hmm. So, like, we think about my porn addiction, mm-hmm. like, everything that you've been talking about, mm-hmm. how you grew up, the things that you experienced. That ain't nothing for... It ain't nothing. Like, if we believe that. If you believe it. If you... Not, I believe it because of tradition or because right. of culture, but, like, I actually... Adopt. You're this into acting my as home. if it's like, true. I, yeah. You're acting it, not faith. just yeah, faith. Faith. Yes. So it's nothing for all the things that we're talking about and things that we've talked about. They they're nothing for God. Right. And I've I've I'm proud of you. Thank you. I've seen parts of you that no one will ever see. You fought me tooth and nail at times for for years. Yeah. Um, but but you also forced me 
to step up and lead you. Mm -hmm. Your awakening woke me up to like, cool, like you got all this, like you've been spending time with God and he's been giving you things to, to say and things to do. Now do them. Mm -hmm. Now obey. Mm -hmm. God giving me a front row seat to your transformation pushed me to obey. Like in, in a way that I really can't describe. It's just like this like, it's worth so much more now. Mm -hmm. Like now the stakes are actually higher. Yeah. Like it's not about, it's not about me. I wouldn't have saw that without witnessing all of this that's happening to you. So I love you. I love you too. You are incredible. You are an, an amazing mom, an amazing wife. Um, we will forever disagree on things, but like <laughs> I can't, I can't do life with anybody but you. Like I couldn't imagine talk about vision. I'd known vision was important from like a church standpoint and like the church having a word. Mm -hmm. And so in the heart of like all like the Nikes crap I was dealing with, I really got to focus on God mm -hmm. and vision board night. Like yeah. that was like when it kind of first started and we would get poster boards and show up at a friend's house and we would have magazines and straight arts and crafts and their scissors, all yeah. markers, all types of stuff. And we would create vision boards and we'd share with the group and we'd pray over them. And I took mine a step further this, this um, what, maybe three years ago now, mm -hmm. to actually pick a word for myself and, and try to read my Bible every day. Mm -hmm. Didn't work. I mean, I was like, <laughs> I was praying for an hour a day. Like yeah. she would come upstairs yeah. and see me and I would be in there just praying. I, I didn't understand <laughs> what was happening. Cause I just was like, okay. I Just, guess. <laughs> well, I I thought I was doing what I was supposed to do, but it was about like me doing it, and it almost became like I was beating myself over like the head a chore. with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Become like a chore. Yeah, like putting a time limit on God, yeah. and like you know, it's got to be an hour, so let me fill in this hour time, and literally babbling. Mm -hmm. And but I had a vision. I had a word. Mm -hmm. And I word scripture, Joshua 1 and 9, never forget it. Yeah. And like, that was like the first time that I'd done something like that. Yeah. And still wasn't quite family oriented yet. Yeah. But then this year you was like, we need a vision. Da, da, da. <laughs> and she was get, like, she was having a moment, y'all. Like she was <laughs> giving it to me. And I'm just like, yo, can you be a little nicer? <laughs> Like, I'm not not having a vision on I purpose. I will say this, that wasn't she was all like, me. Pow, pow. That wasn't <laughs> all me. <laughs> I mean, I, I definitely agreed, but it definitely wasn't all me. But that's always what it comes to. Anytime, like, the Holy Spirit is telling me something specific for you, most of the time, it's something that's so direct and hits you in your, like, weak spots. That it feels so intense, and I can tell, I'm and I'd be like, like "Ooh, I'm babe, I don't want to tell you this, but you just I gotta go. tell you this." <laughs> and it's like, "Yo, like this is this is yeah. crazy." But I mean, sometimes I think like you need specific instruction. Oh, fact. <laughs> oh, without a doubt, I, it it sucks, but I can clearly take it, and it clearly yields results because I go to God, and I'm like, "Okay, God." Um, <laughs> I've never done this before for my family. I don't know where to start. I'm not, I was having a whole moment. I'm like, I'm not not having a vision because you told me that I should have a vision and I saw this and I just decided to not pay attention. Like I'm trying to like reason with God. Like, Dang. I was, oh babe, like this was like a full like. You was, you was real heated about this. Yeah, because I'm like, God, I've been trying to, 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 Stay out your way. I've been trying mm -hmm. to honor you and what I'm mm -hmm. doing and like how I'm leading my family. Yeah. I see what you're doing. So like I, I don't want to mess nothing up. Yeah. And the way he he didn't check me, it was kind of like I didn't say you weren't. This is the next step. Yeah. And you weren't hearing me. Like yeah. you wasn't 
You wasn't listening to this, so I had to get your attention so that you knew, know how serious this is. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, okay, cool. What's the vision? <laughs> like, <laughs> now we're here. Yeah. And so I'm like, okay, cool. I'm, I'm going to watch some messages and, like, get inspired. Did that. Didn't work. No vision. <laughs> no vision. So then I'm like, okay. Now, one of the things about my word is that it's, it always kind of, like, lines up with Transformation's word. Like, yeah. they always go, like, hand in hand. Yeah. So I'm sitting there, and God's like, where were you in your word? I'm like, okay. I'm going to do the around me now. Like, mm-hmm. why? Mm-hmm. Okay, go there. You'll get your word. You'll get your vision. I'm like, okay, cool. Deuteronomy, I'm at seven. I'm like, oh, this this good. Okay. I'm at eight. I'm like, and it stuck out like a sore thumb. Fear God. Because we've been in our wilderness. We've been all this breaking and these stories that we started off talking about and sharing. And it's been like a lot of relationship building, like not yeah. just ours, but hyper-focused on ours to trickle down to our parenting, to yeah. our relationships with family members, yeah. to business, yeah. to every, to everything. Like yeah. starting with him, yeah. next to each other, and everything else has been flowing. Yeah. So we understand what God is about to do. We have some promises from God specifically that we're standing on. Ways that we want to bless people, ways yeah. that we want to do some incredible things for the kingdom, like incredible things. Yeah. And God's like, I'm going to do them. But don't get over there and forget. Mm-hmm. Remember all of these things and all of these stories and remember, like, what I brought you from. Like, y'all, there's been so many. I mean, we can literally sit all day and night and probably the rest of 2022 <laughs> talking about all the things from our past. Yeah that are reasons why we shouldn't be in our present. Yeah. All the things that God shielded us from, all the things that we should be crazy or we should be not in our right minds, Mm -hmm. but yet we're like, God is just on another level. So like, as we're walking into the fruitful, he's, if God did nothing else, like he just said, you know what? God both, y'all have had enough. Like y'all, I've done, I'm going to share some of this with them. We'll be like, cool. Cool. Like, we are thank, so happy here. Sir, like, <laughs> sir, thank you. We appreciate you. Yeah. However, we understand that it's not about us. Right. God brought us here to show us that, okay, it's not about y'all. Mm-hmm. He was bringing the Israelites to the promised land and they thought that he was just going to kill everybody over there, all the Canaanites, mm-hmm. and then they were going to fresh land. He didn't do that for multiple reasons. A, because he understood that they didn't understand that land, so it would have just been like detrimental when the blessing becomes a burden. Right. Like y'all ain't you ready for it, this yet. You get it, but you don't know how to handle You're it. Not, y'all ain't ready for this yet. Yeah. But he slowly but surely drove out the people that weren't supposed to be there. Mm -hmm. I can't help but feel, and thank you, Holy Spirit. Part of that was so that some of the Canaanites could see God. Listen, yes, 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 because God wants everybody. He wants everybody. Even then, God's love was, the Israelites were special, God's people, all of that. But God still wanted them. There are Canaanites in Jesus' bloodline. <laughs> yeah. Canaanites. Not as, like, Canaanites in his bloodline. Mm-hmm. So, like, going into this season for us and our phrase being for God was, like, just like, hey, where I'm sending y'all into, like, I need y'all to keep the commands I've set before you. Keep the, yeah. keep the lessons I've taught you. Yeah. Keep the laws. Like, stay here. This is to protect y'all. Yeah. But literally, the sky's the limit. Yeah. Keep me first. Remember me. Sky's the limit. Or I'll destroy you. Period. 
So think about <laughs> the times and the like places that maybe you go and you got great intentions, mm -hmm. but get stuck in self, mm -hmm. then you have to be destroyed because yeah. God didn't do all of this for us to get out there and make him look bad. Right. Right. Like, no. Yeah. So our, it's a phrase. Well, then I almost second guess the phrase because I'm like, it's a phrase, not a word. Like, what's going on? But I'm like, you know what? God, you said it. So I'm going to share this with my wife. I shared it with mm -hmm. her. What did you th think? I thought, the it first was, time? I thought it was spot on because, you know, as we've been sharing our faith, especially me, like creating content, infusing our faith has been a journey. Like it's been, you know, it's had its ups and downs. And it's something that I think I'll always need continued just encouragement in because I'm in a, I'm in a place where there's a lot of people not like me. <laughs> there's a lot of creators that are not like me. Right. And I'm right. walking into these spaces virtually and physically where I am the only one or I am one of few and to not just like be in the mix, but to stand out because I know that that's what I'm supposed to do. Fact. Talk like that. it's Talk not just girl. about Talk that. going Talk to the girl. place and, and being able to have a smooth, you know, conflict free experience at all. It's about going there. And like literally infecting people. Being salty. Like being salty. Being salty. Like being attractive. Yeah. Showing people like God through how you move and how you operate. And understanding that like that type of confidence is where the little petty, cocky confidence even comes from. Like you being petty or, or not even petty, but you being cocky and self-absorbed by your physical self. It's so much smaller than the confidence you can walk with when you know that God's got you. The, holy, and the boldness you, of the Holy Spirit. And that you're different. operating in it's your different. purpose. It's and different. that you actually walking in the room ain't even you. It ain't. This the 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 feeling that people get mm -hmm. when when a believer walks in the room should be like you can't not pay attention. Right. You can't not see. You can't. I and it's like not even that had person. That though, it's just not realizing God. where it came from. Yeah, so you think it's you. You really think it's you. Pride, cockiness, all ego, that. But it's all like, that stuff again, comes and it's like it's God. The enemy can't create nothing. All yeah. he can do is distort, delay, distract, deluge. Like, you can't. <laughs> That's why, like, you know, just that self building yourself up as an idol is so like plentiful in the day of like social media and like especially what I do, like I'm a part of that ecosystem for real, been a part of it for years and years and years. And it's like, I've seen and experienced enough to know that most of what you see is not real. Yeah. Like for the longest time I was creating content at a certain level that, you know, when I wasn't around other people who created content, I didn't know how different I was. So I'm creating content, you know, using products and kind of capturing moments of my real life. From a real place. From a real place. And place. then, like, you know, I'm doing my hair before I got a big event at school or something. And I'm like, oh, let me film this. And like, it's very like, it makes sense. But then I started getting around other creators and I'm like, oh, y'all like stage all this? Like you walking out of the airport in your cute outfit is not the day you left to get on the airplane? Like you just went to the airport to take the photo for your travel post? And that took away the, the God in what I was doing. Because I started seeing that and seeing it everywhere and seeing that that's what got you brand deals. That's, you know, your beautiful feed and your, all this stuff, the everything. Okay, now I got to focus on that because I want to get the brand deals. I want to be able to make a living. I want to be able to live a certain type of way. So I'm going for chasing you. after that for me. For you. And yes, I, I wanted us to have a beautiful life and our kids to have beautiful yeah. things and all this stuff. But it was really, honestly, the, the money was a byproduct even then because I enjoyed feeling like I was the master of my domain. 
And God had to kill that. So he took me through a season of just <laughs> breaking it down, all of it. So I had to change my name. I, had, I became someone new. And now it's like I can see things. And not only that, but because I filled my heart and my mind with God's word, I'm not afraid when we get crazy DMs and Say, comments. I'm not, a, I'm not afraid of no man. I don't be caring. I, I don't, don't fear no shit. man. I don't fear nobody. Hey. I don't fear nobody. No physical body. I don't hey. fear. And nothing that ain't God, I do not fear. At all. I fear God. So when you gave us that vision for our home, I was like, bet. Because that's the type of energy we're on. Which is crazy because that we wouldn't know. Like, we both have talked about being people pleasers. Yeah. Like, yeah. heavy and we trying to do all the things. We people pleasers, too, because say. we're creative like that. So we thinking about you better than you thinking about yourself when Listen. you ain't thinking about yourself. Yes. So that we can get like it's it's a game. Yep. It's a game. But and you get and people fall in love with the game of it instead of recognizing like you playing a game that ain't meant for you and is actually to your detriment because you never get filled up. Ever. You'll never give enough. You'll never get enough. The Ever. person will never be thankful enough. Ever. The person will never give you back enough. Like Ever. you'll never be enough. So it's just a game that reinforces that lie. And you don't even realize it until you you do it enough times in that cycle. Uh, and you're just like, why do I always end up here? I'm sitting here just like amazed. Like you you really are a different person. Yeah. Like you are a a like it's crazy how different you really are. Like wildly different. Um, me and Mario were talking prior to filming and we were just talking about how like, what we always say here, God saw this. Then. Then. Like God saw this when we couldn't see this i feel like we always like get to this point of the filming and start to remember yeah like the more he does which which is wow because like i, I think it's through only seven or eight starts with god reminding them of where he brought them from yeah where he brought their ancestors from at this point yeah like reminding them what they went through yeah and i named all them things that god did i didn't even talk about the the C part and right. all of that. Like, I didn't even yeah. talk about those things, but like, God starts off reminding them of all these things. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, whenever you get to a point that maybe you will feel like, I deserve some of this glory, I'm, my hands go up and I start to remember. Listen and worship, because that's the only thing you can do at that point. Like, God, I'm not supposed to be here. <laughs> I'm not. The enemy had a totally different plan Listen. for my life, like a totally different plan that didn't have this in mind. And at, and at every point, he tried to put something else. Every time he thought he was losing me, he tried to give me another opportunity. Every time yeah. he, and when, when I finally made the choice to follow God full time, mm -hmm. it was like checkmate. Yep. Like literally checkmate. hundred percent. You got to be a hundred percent. You can't. I mean, you can, I always say you can't, but like literally you can not be and then see what that's like. <laughs> but partner with God, just see what it will be like. Ask him. Just act, like, look, oh, what, what, what do I do? At first, you know, like, but I've been talking to myself for a long time. So now it's like, <laughs> <laughs> listen, it's not weird anymore. Like there's no time for that. Like there's no time. Like, we 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 um we were talking last week actually because the playoffs started this week in football. And we were talking last week about how like grown men and women mm -hmm. will paint their bodies and be out in 
Green Bay, Wisconsin, butt naked with paint on mm-hmm. for a football five game. Degree five degree weather. five degree weather. But, like, a man worshiping is rare. Yeah. Like, a man with his hand raised is rare. Like, both of his hand raising and clear submission yeah. is rare. Yeah. Men crying is rare. Mm-hmm. Um, but, like, that's the way... God intended for us mm-hmm. to be. Like, we won't give it to God, but we'll give mm-hmm. it to these other things. And, mm-hmm. like, now being in a position to where it's like, I don't care. Yeah. I don't care where I am. I don't care who's watching because they wouldn't be able to watch if it wasn't for God. Because I would not be here. They wouldn't even be able to watch if it wasn't for God. So who am I to withhold what's due to him? I was talking earlier. I, man, we would would. Sometimes, I'm so caught up with all the things that God has done in the past, literally. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That I don't even realize, or I have to like manually take the time to reflect on like the most recent stuff. Yeah. I have to actually click the most recent filter yeah. to bring that stuff up to yeah. the top because He's done so I'm much. still sifting through. Right. What I wasn't supposed to make it from. So, right. Yeah. Whew. Honestly, it's it's about it's the same thing it's always been about, which is like know who you are and stay there. Don't try to put on somebody else's mask or put on somebody else's coat or put on somebody else's title or put somebody else's platform on you. Like you have to be you. You can't conform to what's around you. That's what, honestly, I think the God operating in me before I even realized it was him was like, I always felt this like deep need to do my own thing and not like keep up with the trends. And that, you know, I I, I honestly got so, you know, big headed on myself that I thought that I was the trendsetter, you know? Like, I, I've, I've gone through all that. And at the end of the day, God had to humble me because the easiest way for me to explain the dynamics of this influencer marketing community, industry, platform, whatever you want to call it, is the music industry. There's a lot of money in it. A lot, y'all. A lot. I think... To the point where people would just, their jaws would drop if you heard truly how much we make on certain things. And that's the allure, is that, oh my gosh, I want to be paid to just like live my life and like get free stuff. It's always the allure. Yes, and (laughs) and it is, it is alluring. It is, and especially like for me, like I know I was inspired by specific people who are attractive to me and I was drawn to, and I was like, oh, I want to be like her. And honestly, for me, it's this, it's that understanding though. Like I'm going to be in it, but I can't be of it. I, I, I know that I'm being called to do this. So if you're being called to create content for people for a specific audience that recognizes or relates to you, do that. Because how else would I have the platform that I have today if it wasn't for God bringing me through that experience of building this platform? And then now I've got a lot of people to talk to about God. So it's not a matter of like, oh, if I start this way, I can't change. No, it's about taking inventory. You know, like what are you putting first? Like, are you putting the, you know, I'm going to create content that I know is getting the best numbers all the time? Because, like, that is an issue. And that's literally the opposite of what people will tell you. They will tell you, whatever is performing the best, post more of that, right? But if that doesn't match what what God wants you to create, what do you choose then? And the thing is, it's not going to be that clear. It's not going to be clear that it's not God. Because your gift still works. <laughs> so you're still going to be killing it. But things are going to start to feel different. Things are going to start to accompany uh, you. Like, uh, things are going to start coming with anxiety. 
Things are going to start coming with depression. Things are going to start coming with icky feelings. And you're like, dang, this used to be fun. This used to be real <coughs> light and just yeah. I enjoyed yeah. it and all these things. And then something turned sour. That's how you know something is off. I remember that season. Ooh. You know? And it's like you can't shake that feeling. Like you have to pay attention to that because that is a precursor of like, hey, you're going down a path that anxiety only increases on. That path, issues only increase on. And if, if you go down that path, you're not going to be covered. You're not going to be protected. And you're going to fall to the attacks of things that you could have been protected from in a real way. Because nothing physical happens without a spiritual root. So if it's happening here, this is already said and done. If you're only, a, if you're only trying to battle things that you physically see, you would have already lost. You didn't already lost because you missed the battle because the battle already happened. The battle is actually cur- could be currently happening. And if you don't tap in, if you don't check in to what's really going on and say, God, help me. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. cover me in this situation. Like mm. stop me. Step in my place. Give me the words to say. Give me the things to do to handle this better because I feel like it ain't right. It ain't you. And that comes from understanding who he is. We know what he feels like. We know what the Holy Spirit feels like before we know what to call him. We know that feeling that we get before we have the language to describe it. So take inventory. Do you feel like the work you do in creating content, is it bringing you peace? Is it inspiring people in a real way? Or is it bumping your own head up? Is it pumping your numbers up? Is it making you more money in the bank, but Mm -hmm. everything else personally is kind of like, it's trash. You know, (laughs) God looks at your whole life. He's not just looking at, okay, I'm gonna make sure your career is blessed, but like everything else, I'm not worried about, you got it. No, that's not a hundred percent. That's a fullness. It's over everything. So my advice to people who are, you know, dreams and aspirations of reaching a certain point. I mean, I love what I do. Don't get me wrong. I love what I do, but it's such a delicate line. It's such a delicate line because you can fall back into loving the money again at any point. The more things you receive, it's like, and that's, oh my gosh, babe, that's, that's what came up for me when we were talking about um, Deuteronomy before we came out was like this idea that like God had brought the Israelites to the promised land And he's like, but don't get too excited because I've brought you here and you're going to have a lot of nice things. You're going to have a lot of experiences. And not only are you going to physically have nice things and beautiful things, but internally you're going to feel great. He said there should be no poor among you. None. You're going to feel the grandness of me in you because I'm operating in you. But don't forget that it's me and not you in there. It's, It's me, not you. So when you go out and you be great and you do the things that I've called you to do and you know you're anointed and you just know, like, this is what I'm supposed to do. Don't forget, it's not you. That gift is God being able to use you as a vessel. That's the partnership that has to operate. That's the point. That's the like point. God, God <laughs> blesses us for people. Yes. Period. Yes. If it's not about people, that's probably not God. Right. Like, right. Like, Quite literally. Yeah. If it's only for selfish gain yeah. or physical gain, <laughs> think about that. Physical gain is $100,000 more going to make you happy? No. It's just paper. It's just money. It's just a transactional tool. That you got to not figure out what to do with what? because now it's in your position. And you know how many, much more taxes and mm-hmm. just like just extra stuff comes with going up another tax bracket? It's extra, y'all. <laughs> You want to be prepared just, for it when you get there. Just for a feeling. Just, you wanna, for, just for a temporary feeling. Yeah, just, just to be able to say you got it. Like, you don't want it like that. It feels crappy like that. Yeah. I've gotten it like that. We've gotten We've it got like that. Like that. Yeah. Where you just work your butt off till you just can't no more. And then you, yes. But then it's like, I, what's, now what's next? Yeah. <laughs> like, you can't even, because you, you strive so hard to get to that point that it's like, you don't even know what it's like to actually bask in your success. Because you can't. Because you can't. Because you got to 
Oh, oh, right. Hold on. Because I mean, one sure thing did well, but I got seven other things that I'm trying to hold and up. And now there's more expectation because they expect me to do this when it wasn't me in the first it place. It wasn't you in the first place. And that's what happens is we <laughs> get a little taste of, like, God's goodness. And we, like, you know, something happens and we're like, I don't know how that situation worked out, but, like, I got here. You don't know how you got that job, but somehow you got it. You ain't even qualified. But you got that job. Say. You just must be it, right? Like, that that's how me. we think. It's that like, was me. I'm just that, you know, that girl if that I'm in this room me. and I'm doing it. But it's like, if you keep on that energy, mm. talk that talk, girl. It's gonna be destruction in your future because you did not get you that job. God placed you there. God placed you there. God placed you there. And don't get surprised if you don't remember that. And that job starts to be the burden. Like, you wanted that so bad. You wanted that so yep. bad that you didn't even talk to God no more about it once you got in there. You didn't continue worshiping the way you did when you needed the job and you needed the bills paid. Because now you're good. And that's exactly what is happening here. It's like, God brought the Israelites to the promised land. It's like, hold on. Don't forget me. Don't forget what yeah. I brought you from. Yeah. Yeah. Because if you do, I, I will destroy you. Because yeah. I can't have you out here claiming me and look at a mess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel like that, that's what, that's the change that leaving Nike broke. Mm. It wasn't about the finances. It was about showing that I'm your provider. Yeah. It's, it's always been me. Yep. It wasn't your charm. It wasn't your ability to present. It wasn't your creativity. It wasn't the, the way you, you dressed. It wasn't the school you went to. It wasn't the people that you knew. It wasn't any of that because there are people that know all of those things and still don't get the opportunity. Yep. It's because of me. Yep. And, yeah, I feel like when, for you, when you started to actually build your relationship with God, mm -hmm. we started doing the Sabbath. Mm-hmm. Which was like, for working people like us. Listen, hard. It <laughs> was, was a hard. whole nother thing. Hard. But God, God's blessings increased. Yeah, 100%. Tithing. Yep. Remember that? Yep. Remember like that the day? first time we tithed <laughs> together anyway? Yeah. Like, yeah. watching that message and like, coming to a full understanding, God, we're going we're gonna to trust you. Right. And literally, the blessings just Continue, and it's not be. It's not doing it for that. Mm -hmm. But when you're obedient, God has plans to prosper you already. Right, That's and his you're committed to that. For you. Yeah, like you know, like God is faithful. So if He said that, that He has plans to prosper you. Yeah, I'm believing. He don't it. want you to struggle. <laughs> I'm believing. And live it. paycheck to paycheck, and not, no, no, like that's not prosperity. No, and and like. That gets a bad rap, especially in church. I know. But it's like the truth is God bringing these people, God brought these people, the Israelites, mm -hmm. to the promised land, yeah. not the other way around. Right. He introduced them to like some of those things. It was, it was him. Mm -hmm. Always believing that and always understanding that and always going back to that to remind us, I think, is so necessary. Yeah. So necessary. So yeah, the Gabos will be staying humble. Mm -hmm. um, we will be fearing God, listening to God. So if He says stop, stop. If He says go, go. Yeah. And um, even like doing this in our home and like getting not comfortable, but just like getting set up in our home. Like yeah. that's been a vision for us this year. And like. Yep. Finally investing time in here because for the first time, like we're not moving from place to place. Right. A twelve month lease ain't up. Right. Um, we're able to like breathe. Yeah. To invite God to stay here. Yeah. And sky's the limit. Yeah. We fearing God this year. Yep. Nobody else. Nope. Just God. Nobody so else. Just don't, God. Don't don't be alarmed if you just see us like doing the absolute most. Popping up on Listen. IG lives randomly, doing random little events to just push God. Yeah. Um speaking out. Yeah. Praying for people. Yeah. 
Like we believe, yo, that in the New Testament, God gives the disciples the power to cure every single disease and cast out every evil spirit that happened. Mm -hmm. He never took it back. Nope. At least I like, don't see it wanna, anywhere in the Bible where he says he took it yeah, back. Yeah, like we we want to experience that. Like we want to help people. Yeah. God brought us through all of these things. God has given us these testimonies, which we'll continue to share, to help people, to let mm -hmm. people know that like, hey, mm -hmm. God can do it for y'all too. Yeah. It ain't just us. Nope. <laughs> it's not just us. Nope. <laughs> Santa got both life blessings. Right. No. <laughs> it's not with this. This no. Absolutely not. This is God. Yeah. This, all of this is, is God. Yeah. It's a great ending point. Yeah. You want to pray? You pray. Okay. God, um, we love you. God, we thank you for everything that you've already done. Like we already said it. If you don't do anything else, if you don't touch another thing, God, you've touched our lives in such a way that we are yours forever. God, we thank you for what you are bringing us into and, God, what you've already delivered us from. God, we will be very careful to give you all the glory and all the praise. There is no man um, that we will be afraid of. There is no situation that we will be afraid of. There is no obstacle that is too big. God, you... You are lighting every one of our footsteps and we trust you. All of this was to get back to trusting you. All of this was to get back to loving you. And God, we thank you for not giving up on us. God, we thank you that you haven't given up on anybody that's watching. God, we thank you for the people that are watching that need a, a sign from you and that this was it. God, we thank you for using us to touch others. God, you get all the glory and you get all the praise. We are not worthy at all. We are not worthy at all, at all. We give you all the glory and all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks for tuning in to today's episode. We so appreciate your support and we'd love for you to leave us a review wherever you are listening and also visit us on social media. You can find us at Mark Z. Godbolt and Jade Godbolt on Instagram as well as The Godbolt Life on Instagram.